I think this it shouldn't it shouldn't even be an issue. It shouldn't really be something that should be kind of it should be yes automatically. I mean, I can understand why people want to vote no in the first place. Okay. Um, I think it's a backward country if people want to vote no. It's it's just ruining people's lives, ruining happiness for people if they want to vote no. So what yeah. makes the world go round? You're certain, certain, still it can't be found. Circle after circle till we all fall down. What is it? What is it? Oh, what makes the world go round? The certain, certain, still it can't be found. Circle after circle till we all fall down. What is it? What is it? Oh, what makes the world go round? Search and search and still it can't be found. Circle after circle till we all fall down. What is it? What is it? Whoa. My name is Stephen Shark. I am a Galway singer-songwriter. And my name is Katie O'Connor. I'm a Galway singer-songwriter, I'd like and to say. together, <laughs> Gates <laughs> I grew up in Tipperary. I went to an all-boys primary school and Catholic school. And growing up kind of gay and in the closet, everything was a secret. You couldn't really be yourself. And kind of growing up in the secondary school where you're, you know, you are gay, it is pretty much the worst thing you can be in the eyes of everyone around you because, you know, the biggest insult someone can call you is a faggot, which is then what you consider yourself. And you're just growing up with this idea of just, you know, being less and, you know, and it took a long time for me to kind of get around the thought that was, because it was also a very Catholic upbringing I had. And when I was 14 and was kind of like, oh, I'm gay. The second thought into my head was, now I'm going to go to hell and burn in the fires of hell and life is over and it's terrible and my family are going to disown me and I'm going to get AIDS and so all these things. And it took a long time for me to kind of, you know, get over that. And it was a very long struggle. Um, and then it was, it was getting out of Tipperary and going to a bigger city and meeting a more diverse group of people and that I just kind of came to my own. I grew up in a small town as well, and um, I came from a very religious background, um, where it wasn't, it's not okay either to be gay or too different. Um, so I kind of used music as an outlet to kind of voice that and kind of grow into being okay myself and becoming myself. And it was only when I moved to Galway that it kind of, it was acceptable to express yourself artistically and and as a, a person, I suppose, as well. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of how that came about. But I still, I still write a lot of songs about spirituality and how you check yourself constantly about, you know, being gay and how it relates to, you know, where you come from or your the stigma you even feel towards yourself, I guess. Uh, the reason why I think we, we met was because Galway has a very amazing music scene a very supportive network of people, mm -hmm. open mics and sessions that really bring out the best in um, people's creativity. And it's such a Galway thing. I lived in Dublin. I lived in Cork. Uh, I didn't live in Dublin. I've been. To, I played in Dublin. I've lived in Cork. I've been to, like uh, uh, traveling, and I'd never come across a city where you know I've played my music. I remember being pretty much booed off stage one night in a bar in Cork, and there's just lads like. The, the, where you're sitting, I'm up playing on an and they go, this isn't a very good song. No, I don't like him at all. I was a bit of a, uh, this is a terrible song. He swears a lot, doesn't he? I'm actually in the middle of a song listening to this at an open mic. I came to Galway, said, fuck it, I'm going to do music from now on. Went to the open mic upstairs in the Roaching Dove. Played the same song. And then everyone just lost their shit going, like, do that again! That was awesome! It's the only kind of city I've been to where you can just be starting out creative, uh, creatively have really no experience and people are just so open to be like, oh, you do that? Mm. Come to the bar and do that. You're, oh, they'd love you. To, you keep mm. doing that because that's great. Mm. Sure, we met at an open mic in a gay bar yeah. where mm. people just knew she sang, knew I sang and just kind of set up an open mic to give yeah, us yeah, a gig. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. yeah. But even like, I find even on the, on the street like Buskin, 
yeah. like people are so, they're so encouraging and you know you, like it's very rare anymore even that you'll get somebody somebody being mean or nasty because of your sexuality or because of the fact that you're doing something artistic and mm. um creative in you know so i think like it is just um kind of a dream of a city in a way yeah you know it's a goal with class yeah <laughs> for him to see there was no fish in the sea but not one Um, a very very long struggle as well. Stephen was there for when I was coming at the end, of it, I think, <laughs> which was only about a year or or two ago, where I was very comfortable and so not comfortable with being gay. Um, you kind of feel like you're living a double, double standard life or something like that. But um, in the last year, I find I'm just completely myself and accepting of myself, and um, now I assume. There's a part of you that assumes everybody else will naturally accept you because you've accepted yourself and it's taken so long mm. to get to that part that you just think it should be like obviously everything else should be okay, but it's another struggle altogether then for you know the society to <laughs> accept you <laughs> when you assume it already does, but it depends like mm. some things they do and some things they don't mm. like i was I did struggle an awful lot because it was like I said a very religious background and i couldn't tell anybody you know it was um so it was my dark secret you know whatever without holding up those signs mm -hmm. <laughs> you know um but uh like I, I i just you know i connected with myself and with others through music and and like someone like annie defranco is one of my favorites a great songwriter and you know she's bisexual and you know it's not something that always comes up in every song but it's it, you know there's a connection there and um so i think like you just need to find community or you find, need to find a space where it makes you feel okay to be who you are, I think. Um, well, the question coming out. Yeah. Oh, it took years. And like, it was, I started coming out when I was 16 and I didn't stop coming out until I was like 21. I think that's when I told my dad. But if I have to go back in a machine, I would just be like, 18th birthday. I was like, hello, everybody. Welcome to 18th mm -hmm. birthday. I'm gay. Get over it. Bye-bye. And just like, because it was just, you know... We're constantly coming out to people when drunk, forgetting who I came out to, not wanting my sister to know because she was a gossip. And I was like, oh, my dad knew. And then she found out. I was like, don't tell dad. And man knew. And she blew the roof off the house. And it was just all, and it just took years and years and years of this. It was like five years of this. And it really, I should have just went, I'm gay. I'm okay. Everybody should know. Everything's grand. Don't worry about it. But yeah, it took a long time. And now I don't give a fuck. I'm just like, I'm gay. Hooray. It's lovely. And, um, yeah, I do it with a handshake. I used them to. Um, I used, like, the kind of campness and the way I am, I think it did come from, I lost a few friends. I had, a, uh, like, a falling out with a few, like, people in my life when they found out I was gay. And I was so sick of that. I was so sick of, like, constantly having to come out to people. So I just started doing it with a handshake. It's like, hi, sweetie. How are you, darling? Oh, I'm sexy. Thanks for asking. There's, like, no... There's no confusion. Go up on stage and go, hey, bitches. Everyone just goes, he's gay. We don't need to have that conversation. We don't need to be halfway through a gig going, is he saying he instead of she? He's very effeminate. I wonder if he's gay. They just know it straight away. And it's so much easier for me to just get that out of the way. <laughs> just, hi. <laughs> it's gone. Oh, it's gay. <laughs> so, yeah, you're coming out every day to everyone you meet all the time. And um, when you say hello to someone in a shop, or you're walking past, you meet someone in a smoking area, you're just constantly coming out. And 
I just got to a point where I'm just going to make it very easy on myself and everyone else to just be a little bit camper when I'm introducing myself to new people. And I don't know if it's a, that a bad thing or not, because I don't know if it's like, oh, I'm perpetuating the stereotype. But then it's like, I also don't care, and I quite like being camp, so... <laughs> I keep hiding in closets. That's what I do. <laughs> Every time I came out, it was it took so long because I kept having to be in situations where there was closets in the room, and I pop out going ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, paradise is lying in between. So let loose, live now and let it flow. Gonna let you know. You better work for it, work for it. Get down on your knees. Run and sweat for me, sweat. Nothing in this life is free. It could be fun. It takes two. Come get tangled up. In Let's turn this glitter to gold Tonight it's only you and I Tonight it's only Tonight it's only I Tonight it's only you and I Tonight it's only Tonight it's only Glitter to gold Gold and gold and gold Been fantasizing about this moment a million times before. No denying, I've been fantasizing about this moment a million times before. Oh, 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 I think it's kind of it's only fair isn't it there's no reason to have differences regardless of who you love you should be allowed to marry them and um, well my brother's actually gay so like for like we never had an issue with it we never oh, had yeah. anyway ever before he yeah yeah never passed so, him he's like you know he's happy so, so we'd be delighted to see his day come yeah and be married yeah. walking down the aisle i think we're brilliant yeah, yeah. yeah i couldn't find gay musicians growing up that I could listen to and identify with. I knew they were out there, but they, they, their music was very kind of like, oh, I love them, and do you love me? And it was, it was all very gender neutral, where um, I really wanted to write music, where I was like, no, I'm singing about it, dude. I'm going to use that terminology. I'm not going to be all like, oh, this person broke my heart, and now my feelings are all broken. I'm just going to be like, no, he's a bastard. His name is this, and I hope he dies in a fire. You know, <laughs> so I wanted to write this really visceral music, which was angry and, you know, uh, you know, just kind of to the point and no dolling stuff up and no getting lost in metaphors and in the closeting yourself in poetry and just being like, no, just this is songs that about a gay dude singing about a gay relationship. Gay, 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 gay. And it was just, yeah, so it, it, it weighed a lot on it. And I really like singing about issues that I feel like, you know, are very particular to me and things that I care about. I want to write about coming out to my mum. I want to write about coming out to my dad. I want to write songs about, you know, um, my relationship with religion and politics and the world around me due to the fact of my sexuality. Like, how much of your personality comes from your sexuality is quite a lot, especially when you're a minority. And I wanted to put that into my music. And I, like... And, you know, I do get a, a, the odd slag for it. It's like, Stephen, do you ever write a song about not, like, you know, about not being gay? And I was like, well, no, fuck you. There's a billion of those songs. Like, in most, I turn on the radio, every song is, you know, I love her, she loves me, we are a straight couple, and I'm singing about you, sexy girl. And he was like, oh, you sexy man. And I was like, no, fuck that shit. I want to sing a song about sucking a dick. <laughs> <Like that's laughs> dick sucking music is what I call my music. It's a case of <laughs> Almost about. 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I, th- I think I like I I think on the in a, in a, in a, <laughs> not so much. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> you can cut that. <laughs> um, no, I like I think uh, with um with my music, I think it's kind of along the same lines as yours, except a lot less. Um, it's m- much more subtle. Like I will say she, and I will like I I I think my sexuality comes across in my music, but I think I try and do it in a way where I expect it not to be a thing or a big deal. Mm-hmm. Like, this is just the way it is, or, you know, it's kind of in passing almost, you know? So, yeah, so I think you're a bit more kind of Bob Dylan style. Um, but that's like there. our personality. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you'd be... A bit more passive or something. Yeah, like and that. I'm just in your face, and you're a bit yeah. more like, oh, isn't that beautiful? Which makes us a great duo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got your lipstick on my collar, you got me living for the thrill. How does it feel to make me feel this good? Down, down, deeper now, what will I find while I'm searching on my grind? Boy, you've got a dirty mind And I I tell you now what I want to do Waste no time trying to think this through I want you where you want me So can we pretty please Don't take it easy Don't take it easy I I assume it will pass, but that's because I assume that everybody wants us all to get along and all to have the same rights, and it shouldn't be a question of, you know, someone will say no, you know. So if, like for me, I just I just think it's kind of assumes that it will pass, and it needs to pass. So it shouldn't really be a discussion at this yeah. point in you know society. Yeah. Well, I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just so annoyed that it's even a referendum. Like, it drives me crazy the thought that we're the first country to have a referendum on equality. Like, the rights of the minority should never be voted on by the majority. It's something I've always said, and I think it's so silly that we're actually having this referendum. We have to. It's constitutional changes. It was written into our constitution. We need to have a referendum to fix it. But the fact is, there's still this conversation being had on the radio, uh, in the newspapers, on TV, where, oh, it's a referendum, so therefore each side must be balanced and weighed, and we must talk about it in this very rational and open way, and it's ridiculous, because the statistic now is 75 to 75% to 25% for. So uh, that's one out of four people. And when I hear these statistics on the radio, on the TV, in the papers, I'm going, like, that's one of four people in the country that doesn't believe I deserve the same rights as everyone else. And that really breaks my heart because I'm walking down the street, I see four people in passing. Statistically, one of those people just doesn't think I deserve the same rights as everyone else. It's weighing on my mind constantly. It drives me crazy that I can't just, like, I'm on a radio show now where I actually can't talk about how I feel about this referendum that is going to change the lives of every gay person in Ireland or a bisexual or, you know, anyway. And you can't talk about it openly because you need to have some fucking asshole who doesn't believe you have deserve the same rights as everyone, just going like, well, I don't believe because A, B, C, and, you know, Bible, religion, uh, children, children uh, I'm crazy. Um, you know, it's like, it's just so, it doesn't affect straight marriage in any way. There's no statistics showing this or supporting this. And it's just... Um, <laughs> 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 right no, over. <laughs> no, you're completely. Right. I agree with you completely. Um, I think you're dead on. You mm. know, I just it just, like in my head it just doesn't make sense that there would be people voting. No, do you know what I mean? But yeah. they are there. Which but is you, kind of you live like yeah. in like you you have like your gay friends. You have mm. you you have your community around you. You have your the support. Your your people that are okay. Straight with you. friends who just mm. they they don't give a fuck. And then like you have your life set up in such a way where you don't deal with these people for, on a day to day basis where, you know, your Twitter feeds, your Facebook feed, you, you design your life around you as to what you are, you know, what you see, what TV, what radio you watch. 
you can make it so your life, there's always going to be these people agreeing with you. So, but there are this totally other side of people that you're not in your circle of friends going like, no, we need to set, we need to get organized. We need to stop these people from getting these rights. And of course, you're not going to hear them on the radio. See, that's another thing that drives me crazy. I think the reason why everyone got so annoyed at the radio thing was because they want to balance, blah, blah, blah. But it's stopping people from talking about it because they're not going to be able to find someone to openly go, I openly do not, I discriminate openly about this and um, no, I don't want them to, like, it, being that person to me, just going on the radio and saying, no, I don't believe it's been the children and da 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 and people are always getting in trouble now saying, no, if you're not for gay marriage, then you're homophobic. And I don't give a fuck. If you're not for gay marriage, you're homophobic. Yeah. You believe these people don't deserve the same rights as you. And they think you're their lesser. And that is the definition of what homophobia is. And I don't give a fuck. So, yes, we're very nice people. <laughs> Oh, out in the valley where the sharks and me had danced to the drum of a different beer. Yeah. And now I'm free. Oh, out in the valley where the sharks and me had danced to the drum of a different beer. Yeah. And now I'm free. And he said, Lord Almighty, oh, what have I done to deserve this? I was only good to you. And he said, Lord what have I done to deserve this? I was only good to you. I hate that, da da da. Hey, that, da 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 da. Hey, that, da da da. Hey, that, da da da. Hey, that. So much a part of your music. You don't mind being associated with being a gay musician because that is. I've me. never been. I've been called a gay musician. I think twice, yeah. and the second time it kind of annoyed me, because yeah. like. But I don't think it's like the main. Like, it's not the main your attraction. Main, yeah, your main yeah. attraction. Your talent, like it's the talent, it's the style of music, it's mm. what you're saying, but like that is part of it, like the fact that you are gay as well as is a part. I think of. Do you put it in any of like your mm. press releases or blogs? Or? No, because mm. I don't think that's necessary. No, why. You know. People are gonna get it when they see me in a dress. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, yeah. Can I argue with that? <laughs> you know, I don't mind being identified as an LGBT artist because I have been referred to as that before. And, you know, again, I've been looking for them since I was 16. I was wanting to find yeah, these musicians. Exactly, and yeah. So if someone goes, oh, he's a gay musician, he sings about being gay, it's like, does it bother me? It's very true. It's very apt to what I do. And um, but I think it also helps a lot of people that are in your shoes, um, you know, at, at, you know, 16 or 17, like, wanting to find someone who gets their mind to they mm. can relate to you know it definitely like i think you know you are contributing to um to other people's lives when you identify as an lgbt um musician as there's well. nothing nicer than when you get that email or someone at a gig going like oh that's your music really meant a lot to yeah. me and it, it really opened my mind to things and it's so nice to finally hear this and I give the CD to my brother and he's gay and he loves it and he listens yeah, yeah. to it all the time and yeah. you know it's great to have this like you know you're singing about stuff that people actually want to hear and you have something yeah. to say and it's important to have something to say in your music yeah exactly because yeah. there's enough music I think out there that says nothing there's a lot of shit there's a lot of shit <laughs> so. oh yeah uh, do everything right. Will never be jilted by a man. Um, <laughs> tap tap. Tap tap. <laughs> so the catchphrases. We need to work on your catchphrases. Yeah. Uh, no. The uh, best advice I can give to coming out is find people in your life who, you know, genuinely care about you and those people won't care if you're gay or straight or whatever. Um, if you're in an unsafe place, get to a safe place and be out. But like, it, I, it's just come out like everybody probably already knows and no one's going to get that's I was so annoyed it took me so long I wish I just decided when I was like 16 or 18 just go like by the way this is all the information you need to know it's one little thing okay bye bye yeah. oh, fuck what's the next song I right, shut up <laughs> and there'll be days full of baby steps and angels or fairies chasing teeth Crayons on walls and noses shooting peas. And when they get big and strong, they'll move to further shores. Start their own family with a love like mine and yours. So let's get married. 
in the sun Have babies one by one You can call them Dale, Grace, Lucas or Sally Tom, Dick or Harry, long as I'm with you da -da 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 -da. And I'll give you all the love your heart could ever hold I'll be holding your hand until the day that we get old Sitting in our rocking chairs we'll kiss the world goodbye And we'll be dancing on in the great blue sky la da 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 I love you. Thank you very much, you guys. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your nights. You know, the thing's off now, and I'm just like, so much more relaxed. I just yeah. noticed, like, when the camera's off, I was like, word vomit, word vomit. How many swear words can I fit into this sentence? <laughs>